You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. Former President Donald Trump is firing back after his conviction, claiming his hush money trial was rigged. So what do Long Island voters think and could this impact the election? Jill Wagner has a story. It's a rigged, it was a rigged trial. We wanted a venue change where we could have a fair trial. We didn't get it. One day after a jury found him guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in his hush money trial, former President Trump vowing to appeal the decision, saying the entire case was about politics. The only way they think they can win this election is by doing exactly what they're doing right now, win it in the courts because they can't win it at the ballot. Newsday's Jane and Fisher was at Trump Tower in New York City for today's press conference and said it felt like a campaign stop. Today, uh, I saw a defiant Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump had uh, said that he's going to fight back, that he's going to appeal this case. Uh, he's not going to take this line down. Um, but he also spoke about migrants and, and other issues, uh, and which are some of his his campaign uh, stump speech. In fact, Trump said he's raised $34 million from small donors after the guilty verdict came in. So far, Long Island's Republican congressional members are standing by Trump. State Democrats released a statement saying, while Republicans claim to be for law and order, they were quick to come to the defense of their boss, convicted felon Donald Trump. But how could the guilty verdict impact the election? A YouGov poll taken immediately after the verdict found 27 percent of Americans say Trump's conviction makes it less likely they'll vote for him. Almost the same amount, 26 percent, say it makes them more likely to vote for him. And 39 percent say it makes no difference. A former president being convicted on 34 felony counts cannot help but have an impact on the small number, but still significant, persuadable swing voters that are found basically in suburbs around the country. Here on Long Island, we spoke to plenty of voters who say they followed this case closely and that the verdict will impact how they vote on Election Day. This is the first time in, in history that we would have like a president that is actually a felon. I'm a business owner, so I probably would have voted Republican if it wasn't for Trump. But some Republicans are sticking with him. I think it's a disgrace. You know, after the man, what he's done to this country, they just want to put him down. For Newsday TV, Jill Wagner. Suffolk County's red light camera program could come to a screeching halt. That's because of what's going on at the state capitol. Albany Bureau Chief Yancey Roy joins us now to explain what's going on. Yancey, what's happening up there? Suffolk County needs uh, state permission to reauthorize the red light cameras for another five years because their current authorization runs out in December. To do that, they need a bill to pass the state Senate and assembly. The political problem is this, is that nobody in the Suffolk Senate delegation wants to put his or her name on the bill and sponsor it to get it through Albany. Now, is there any chance the red light camera program could be salvaged? Oh, sure. Uh, there's about five days left in session. Uh, that's plenty of time to get a bill in and get it passed. Uh, there's also an alternate route that some legislators might be hoping for, as that is the Suffolk bill gets thrown into what's called the Big Ugly, uh, which is lovingly known in Albany as the last bill in the session, where you might throw in a whole lot of issues into one bill and pass them all at once. Now, this is going to have a big impact on Suffolk County, right? Well, it brings in about $10 million a year in revenue. That's not a huge portion of the county budget, but it is significant. And if it's the money's not there, the county would have to raise resident revenue elsewhere or maybe cut back on spending and programs. Yancey, always a joy having you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Now to read more about this exclusive story, go to newsday.com, click get more below the Newsday TV video box. And final preparations are underway for the Cricket World Cup at East Meadow. Check this out. Here's an aerial view of the temporary stadium. Warm-ups will start tomorrow and the tournament will last 12 days. People from around the world are expected to show up at Eisenhower Park to watch the matches.
A new swimsuit store is making a splash on the island. Melissa DeStefano has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Swimsuits for all shapes and sizes. We carry a selection like no other. Great Shape Swimwear and Lingerie has a new home in Roslyn. My partner Joel Weinberg, he is a journeyman in the swimwear business. He's been doing it for over 40 years and as a result, he is able to curate this collection of swimwear. There are 25 brands to choose from, from all over the world. Here we have Jets. This is an Australian brand you might love. Here is Cifali, also from Australia. These are brands that you can't find everywhere else. What's the most popular? Great question, come with me. Or should I say, what's the most flattering? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is Kala Coletta. So Kala is special. And what it does to the shape of a woman's body, it's amazing. Every woman should try on a Kala. I'll take two, please. <laughs> <laughs> we are high touch, we're not high tech. When you come in, outfit experts have seen every body type and they'll guide you towards brands that make sense for you. And then we want you to try it on. Elisa, what do you think? <laughs> I'm very modest, so I would like this to cover up. <laughs> I like a cover up to cover up. They also have a selection of beachwear and accessories. Beach hats and beach bags. <laughs> Something I'm willing to try on in the store on camera. When a woman comes in, they might not necessarily look forward to this experience. When our customers walk out and they say, wow, that wasn't so bad. I feel like we hit it right on that. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. Now to read more about great shapes, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. A new taco spot has found a winning recipe by combining authenticity and family. Annie Berlin has today's Feed Me TV. I take my Mexican food really seriously. So when I was going around eating tacos all over Long Island for our new best tacos list, I found a new to me style of taco called the Taco Placero. The new restaurant is called Casa Dorado, and it's owned by Puebla native Raul de Jesus and his wife, Elizabeth Guevara. They bring me back to my childhood. Oh. My mom used to take me to the, to the plaza, like to the supermarket. She used to ask me, are you hungry? I said, yeah, I was always hungry. His two brothers and his sister also help run the place, commuting from Corona, Queens to Riverhead every day. Esta vez para siempre. <laughs> So you grew up with the Taco Placero. Tell me about it. Taco Placero, Plaza. My mom used to take us to, to Atlisco. That's it, a big city in Puebla. It's the Plaza. If you're hungry, there's some ladies that just have the, all the stuff ready. And they fix you the taco. It's like a fast food, right? Like, yeah. take one and just go to work. I use the tortillas like this mm. for make the taco. I use rice, jalapeno, and onions. That looks we good. call them rajas. We use the air and we use French fries. The last one is the chile relleno <laughs> and the top. Wow. There's so much on there. How do you eat it? I use the wrap because if I not use it, I make it. <laughs> you got paper in your mouth. <laughs> I love that. That's really good. It feels like a like a home style meal. Like it just feels like really comforting. You have a little bit of everything. It's like if you go to the diner and you can't decide if you want hard boiled eggs or rice. Would you say that this is a symbol of where you come from? This is the, the food that they make in my area. And where, I, where we come from. We are from Atlisco, Puebla. Is that why you live in Riverhead? Because it's similar to Atlisco? Yes. Uh, this is very peaceful, just like Atlisco. Was this your dream to have your own restaurant? Yes, to have my own restaurant, but more like to people like my family close together. We work as a team, but at the same time we work as a family. Those things together, like combined together, it makes me feel very happy. Oh, that's feel so sweet. Me, I'm hungry too. <laughs> 
Now for more on Casa Dorado, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Now let's check out your very sunny Long Island weather. And why not have some tacos on a pool float? Because check it out, it's going to be sunny pretty much all weekend starting with tomorrow. As you can see, we're in the 80s and take a closer look, you'll see these are sun graphics. Sunny, 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 sunny all day. It's going to be gorgeous with temps, like I said, near 80s. Take a look at your seven day forecast Saturday, Sunday, both dry. Monday, we might have some rain and next week we'll deal with the wet stuff later, but overall great weekend. Long Island weather is brought to you by Fire Island Ferries. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great weekend.